Hi, my name's Matt. I recently bought this 2023 Raider boat that I use for uh, various things. Uh, I write articles for magazines and write books. And so it's very useful for marine photography and research and things like that. Of course, I research halibut too sometimes. And the easiest way to do that is just by catching them on a hook. So this boat holds 160 gallons of fuel which led me to do some calculations and I discovered it would be quite possible to run it to Kodiak Island and back. And so we decided to give this a try. We decided to launch out of Homer and go to Kodiak. So you can break this trip up into several legs to make it easier to process. The first leg is from Homer to the end of the peninsula around the Flat Islands. And that's about 30 miles and that's an easy stretch i've done that many times and then the next stretch is from flat islands to the barren islands which is about 24 miles and i've also done that many times what i haven't ever done before is go past the barren islands so from the barren islands to shuiak island is another approximately 24 miles give or take these are all approximate and then I wanted to go up the Shelikoff Strait. The Shelikoff Strait is world renowned for having dangerous waters. So naturally I wanted to see it. And so the stretch on the Shelikoff Strait going up down the, or up, I'm not sure, I guess it would be down, going down the west side of Fognac Island is about 48 miles. And then we'd come to Raspberry Island and we'd cut across there between Raspberry and Kodiak. And that would bring us to Whale Pass and the then from Whale Pass, we would circle around and finally go into Kodiak. The trip is dependent on weather, very much so. So I was watching the weather and finally it looked like we got a, had a good two day window because I wanted to come home again right away the next day. So here you can see the windy weather forecast. I like windy, I think it is usually very accurate. Um, so you can see we had pretty calm seas. Light blue is good, the lighter the better. Dark blue is okay if it turns orange or red then you got real problems so here you can see the map you can see the seas are forecast to be very light the whole way down the whole way there across the gulf of alaska down the shelikoff strait so it looked like an ideal time to try it so i talked my brother josh into going along and also my friend dale so they decided to come along with me and we we decided to uh, make it happen so this video is sponsored by these two companies, Miller Tech, which makes lithium batteries, and Plain Direct, which is classified advertising. So I run Miller Tech batteries in my boat. I really like them, they're lithium. And the biggest difference I've noticed is that with my anchor winch, like I can pull my anchor up and down as many times as I want. Even with the new boat, before with the old batteries in it, I would start getting low voltage alarms and all sorts of, uh, problems if I would drop anchor and pull it too many times back to back. Plain Direct is a classified advertising site that's geared towards homestead style things, although you can put about anything on there. But there's a lot of livestock, chickens, sheep. I even saw some baby skunks on there this morning. So if you want baby skunks, sheep, tractors, uh, you name it, pretty much anything farming related is on there. You can also list your things on there for free. So check out plainedirect.com. So my dilemma here is my forward sonar mount broke. I 3D printed it and I hit a log and it took it out. If you took, if you took a, a piece like a triangle here and tied it in, like put a 90 degree bend on it, tied it into this bolt, that'll give it a lot of... I'm a little uh, funny about forward sonar because the last time, I, last year, I hit a rock and sank my boat. Oh no! Anyway, needless to say, that was kind of a negative experience. So Josh put together this fabricated brace here, which seemed like it should work just fine. So we're ready to head off to Homer. We wanted to start at 5.30. It's almost 6. 
but I think that'll still work out just fine. So we're just cresting the hill into Homer. It looks like a uh, fantastic day. We'll see what it looks like further out. back here tomorrow evening. Skipper's log, it is 8.03 and we have just left the Homer Harbor. Josh is checking the rear sonar. Still there, I don't know what condition it's in, but it looks like it's in the right direction and it's not floating independently of the boat, so. Sounds like a winner to me. We got gorgeous seas. It's the best I've ever saw it out here. We're right at Flat Islands, getting ready to cut across to uh, over that way is where we're going. We're gonna shoot past the Barrens, 55 miles to Shuiak, and then we're gonna run down the coast of a fog neck. So here we're still in some tidal rents. We're around Point Adam, just past Flat Island a little bit, but I think in a few miles this is gonna flatten out according to the weather forecast. And then I think the uh, Shellacoff Strait, I think that's gonna be calmer. I mean, this is still very calm, but I think that'll be uh, more like Cook Inlet water that we just left. But we'll see. But 49 miles to the Shellacoff Strait. So yes, our oh, sonar okay. mount yeah. failed. All right, I'll need sweet. to 3D print another one, I guess. It calm slightly. Right there's a fog neck, or that's actually raspberry. I'm not sure what's what around here. And just after the sonar mount failed, my anchor rope failed as well. So here Josh is reattaching the anchor. It didn't come completely loose. Uh, it's just a breakaway thing that failed.
here we are heading towards Whale Pass. Whale Pass is directly ahead. Raspberry Island is on the left and Kodiak Island is on the right. After being bounced and jostled around for many miles, the calm waters here were a very welcome change of pace. We slow down for a sea otter, you can see him here off to our left. We stopped to enjoy the calm waters and we soon heard the telltale whoosh of a whale spouting. Initially I thought this was a humpback whale, but it didn't seem to quite match the description. I think this whale was about 40 feet long. So I thought the whale swam off, and as I was bringing the drone into land, Josh was about ready to catch it when he suddenly saw the whale and pointed over to it. Dale did as well. So I turned around and ran after it again. I've taken rid of that here to Kodiak already. So that was the ferry that you just saw as we were coming into Kodiak. So as we pulled into the Kodiak Harbor, I got this text from my wife and it said my daughter had rolled my Jeep. So that was quite the text to get after being out of phone service for the whole day. Uh, thankfully everybody was okay. Um, so after arriving to Kodiak, we got the boat tied up. I got permission from the harbor master to keep it there. And then we went to uh, Henry's Great Alaskan What'd Restaurant, I think it's called. Um, it was good. Uh, <clears throat> a little dull in the middle. But then uh, coming into Kodiak, uh, it was really nice. Saw some whales, saw some dolphins. Uh, really yeah, I liked it. Now we got to go back. <clears throat> Or sell the boat and fly home. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Recap number two, since uh, somebody was unaware of the camera settings. <laughs> Won't mention any names. It starts with Dale. <laughs> 
That's all right. So, uh, so we feel really tired. Although we're <laughs> thinking of walking to McDonald's, so I guess we're not too exhausted. <laughs> well, Alaskans eat the most ice cream per capita of any state. So, uh, and that, they do it in the winter time. You in that, that spirit of that, of that, you know, statistic, we're gonna go get ice cream at McDonald's and coffee. And coffee. You just have coffee. Yeah, but it's only two cups. No, oh, yeah. So yeah, we went 180 miles, give or take a well, no, actually it's a little more than 180. If you count the distance up and down as well, <laughs> it probably went 200 that's about miles. 200 miles. Yeah, we saw whales. They turned out great. Or the videos yeah. we took, I thought of the whales. I thought turned out good. What was your favorite part of this trip, Dale? Getting here. <laughs> Actually, leaving the harbor was really nice because the weather was so perfect. I mean, the sunrise was awesome. Mm -hmm. The wind was still. Well, it was smooth sailing that we got the, to the end of the peninsula, so the first 30 miles were great. Right. We thought we was going to make record time. Yeah, yeah, we thought we were going to go 40 the whole way here. Yeah. Instead, we went 18. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah uh, our plans to stop and fish and maybe find some deer to hunt kind of <laughs> went down the yeah halfway here we decide we just we just want to get here hammer down and let's get there <laughs> we're tired of this um well maybe tomorrow we can get some fish in the morning we walked over we were planning to eat at mcdonald's but then a local told us that this food stand was much better and so we ordered our food there and it was very tasty the trip back um would be a lot shorter. We decided to go up the east side of a, of a fog neck island and go the shortest way back. So you can see our route here. It's pretty straightforward. I won't go into detail like I did on the way to Kodiak. Basically, we just go up the east side of the island, cross over past the Barren Islands, and then head back up the peninsula. Getting ready for the ride back. The weather forecast is good, but it was yesterday too, so we're not sure what to expect. There's Josh, always late because he had to get coffee. Well, I just said that because Marlene says that to me. And it felt good to say it to someone else. So we burned 120 gallons exactly to get here. I'm gonna have to top the tank off. Let's go to the same tank. It's a vent. One thing that struck me about this fuel pump system is how big the hose is and how we pump 38 gallons of fuel in like a minute or two. Watch how fast it clicks by. That's much faster than your, at least the gas pumps I use. Maybe I just use slow pumps. So far the seas have been good. Even out of the yet. <laughs> now you have to be mindful of the uh, charts on the way out or you run into rocks like those over there. We all know that's not good. We got six inch rollers going on here. But we're able to maintain speed. I can sleep on this floor. Over there's Marmot Island on the left, and there's the glorious shores of a fog deck. You know, I still have the engines in gear. I thought the tide was really moving. Well, this spot's a dud. We didn't get any bites in five minutes, so we're going somewhere else. Josh, lift that ugly fish up so we can see it. That's a, the biggest Irish lord I've ever saw. They're hideous fish that are good for nothing, so we're letting them go. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, that'd be He's bigger than the others. It might be. 
Let's measure them and find out. Where's the tape? There's the tape right here. I think he's legal. How was it going to be? 35. Nope, under 30. Okay, well, he fought nice and hard. So we got the Barren Islands up ahead. It's a little bumpy, but one big difference is we're going 37 or 38 miles an hour. The seas are actually very nice. So we're really making time, except when we stop and fish. Are we moving? But I uh, point two miles an hour, point zero three. Not much. Here, hang on, I'm gonna. Okay, crank it down. Crank it down. Crank it down. It's better to be aggressive. Yeah. Oh, it's off. Oh, that was all right. We're now crossing the last big stretch. 27 miles to the peninsula. Well, we're back at Homer, entering the harbor. Well, here's our catch from the trip. Even though we weren't really going for fish, still fun to do a little fishing. So, how many rockfish or sea bass? Yeah, six, six sea bass. Two halibut. Two halibut. And Dale caught both of those. So, I guess. I think it's... Dale caught this one. <laughs> 37 oh, pound, yeah. and uh, I don't know what the other one is. Probably 15 or 20. And the one that got away. 300 pound test line we tore, so something big. 